Hello to all dear students of the first year general medicine. Uh, we are, uh, in fact, uh, in the end of the whole process of the teaching program in this very modified summer term of this academic year. Uh, the last topic uh, comprises the neural tracts. We, uh, we all remember that neural tracts uh, are uh, not so complicated, this could be complicated, but if you remember all the main parts of the cross sections uh, through the brainstem or the spinal cord or uh, the encephalon, so we can, we can uh, combine all this basic knowledge and then we will see now in the short review very reduced review of the neural tracts uh, that uh, the structures are joined together, they act in one unit, functional unit, and we will know more uh, after this review, uh, which will be better than uh, all the knowledge, the previous knowledge in the separated portions of the brainstem, of the dencephalon, of the telencephalon, etc. So when we look at the, of the tracts, uh, first of all, we know that there are three categories. Uh, number one is the, are the association. Uh, you see that they run on the same side. Uh, there is the diagram showing just uh, the brainstem, telencephalon, and part of the spinal cord. Uh, the association uh, are in green. Uh, the commissural pathways, uh, they interconnect the identical structures here in the diagram identical points on the contralateral sides like via the largest uh, commissure which is called uh, callosal body corpus callosum uh, these association and commissural pathways are really not so complicated and this is just a short short information about them but uh, much more complicated are the projection tracts. We divide them into the ascending and descending. Uh, based on the general agreement we use for the ascending, uh, the blue color uh, with the uh, numbers of the neurons and for the descending, uh, the same but in red color, again using indexed, indexed uh, N as the number of the neuron. So when we look, as usually, at the first category, ascending, starting with the, uh, with the, uh, just for the introduction, starting with the receptor, this is free nerve ending, uh, transmitting pain. We follow the first neuron uh, and one which ends somewhere in the level of the spinal cord, and then the second neuron ascends, uh, crossed, being crossed at the level of the brainstem somewhere, uh, passing uh, as the lemniscal system, you remember from the cross-section lemniscal system, which ends uh, in one of the, or more nuclei of the thalamus, and the last neuron, number three, the third neuron representing typical uh, thalamocortical neurons, ends at the level of the uh, post-central gyrus, gyrus post-centralis uh, area, uh, after Broadman 3, 1, 2. This is what we remember from a short review of the pathways uh, explained uh, in the different sections of the spinal cord and the brainstem. Uh, the, these are ascending uh, tracts. Concerning the descending, we start uh, from the motor area, number four after Broadman, pre-central gyrus. Uh, from the pyramidal cells, uh, the first neuron descends, passing in the ventral parts uh, of the uh, telencephalon and brainstem, uh, passing through the internal capsule at different level. Here we have the motor pathway in the posterior limb of the internal capsule, this is exactly here, and then descending without uh, without interruption through all the brainstem crossed uh, at the level of decusation of pyramids to the contralateral side, reaching finally uh, the neurons uh, in the anterior horn of the spinal cord from which the second neuron, the last one, uh, descends to the uh, uh, motor end plate of the skeletal muscles. So we divide and describe two neurons Number one is called upper, and number two is called lower motor neuron. Uh, but this is just a direct pathway. We call it pyramidal tract. We described briefly pyramidal tract. But it's not only pyramidal tract. There are also the other tracts which are called 
the tracks of the brainstem or also we can use a relatively good name which was used as the extra pyramidal systems uh, this is because they don't pass through the uh, decusation of pyramids and these systems uh, we could use even the extra pyramidal name uh, the extra pyramidal tracts uh, they they descend from the motor area from the same neurons from area four six or even four six eight and then or 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 uh, even from the other areas but they descend uh, in the uh, in the talencephalon then uh, are synapse interrupted in the subthalamic at the subthalamic level uh, here the example is the uh, is the complex of the basal ganglia as the lentiform nucleus or uh, caudate nucleus as we see or uh, at a different level here uh, we see nucleus subthalamicus of Luisi uh, subthalamic nucleus uh, belonging to the diencephalon so uh, the uh, following neurons descend either directly or usually with some uh, synapses uh, at the level of the reticular formation we see the chain of the network of the neurons forming the reticular formation and then the last neuron then ends at the level of the um, of the anterior horns of the spinal cord so this is the general view general architecture of the pathways ascending descending forming the projection and just uh, as an introductory information concerning the association and commissure so we try to start now as usually with the ascending pathways this will be page uh, the following page so starting with the tracks, which are called also somatosensory, this is logical. Uh, in general, they are the ascending tracks. We start with the number one, dorsal column lemniscus system. So this lemniscal system is called lemniscus because they pass through lemniscus uh, to, a, to every, uh, every single um, uh, chapter description of the pathway we add also the information concerning the course of the uh, pathway this one as you see is crossed is crossed uh, what we need we need the receptor somewhere in the skin or mucosa then we need also the sensory cortex uh, the area 312 after broadman and uh, usually three neurons then we need also thalamus with specific nuclei as uh, we see it here ventral posterior lateral uh, you probably remember that when we in the short description of the thalamic nuclei we said that not all of them will will be studied just few of them uh, will be integrated into the course of the ascending pathways uh, before we we'll start description uh, the always we uh, try to characterize uh, the pathway uh, first of all touch localization and position sense then important for the uh, for the vibration for pressure and touch uh, discrimination so these are the modalities and also uh, proprio uh, proprioception uh, when we look at this dorsal column, that means the, on the dorsal funiculus, we start with the uh, skin receptors. Uh, they are encapsulated, not free nerve ending, for a neuron ending at the level of the, uh, we are at the, in the oblongata of the nucleus, grassless nucleus cuneatus. So after synapsing the second neuron, uh, passing to the uh, opposite side crossing, uh, crossing, uh, forming the medial lemniscus, ascending lemniscus, and the second neuron ends at the level of ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus, and the third neuron, number three, uh, the thalamocortical, ends at the level of 312. So it's connected passing through medial lemniscus this is very important and also we remember that our segment our, uh, there is segmental arrangement medial sacral uh, lumbar thoracic cervical this is the rule of color but just to know that this is a, a somatotopic arrangement again this is the dorsal color medial lemniscus important for the discrimination of touch in general proprioception so the following uh, following pathway is the number two is the anterolateral system. This is different. Anterolateral system uh, is the system uh, which is also called spinothalamic tract, uh, just briefly crossed completely, consisting of the neuron and the modalities. Again, the 
typical nociceptive transmitting pain, nociceptive or proto or protopathic tracts, uh, also uh, transmitting uh, extreme pressure, heat, and cold. This is just for characteristics. And if you look at the whole diagram, uh, we see spinothalamic, typical spinothalamic. Again, what we need, we need the as you see, different from the different from the previous uh, diagram here, we see the free nerve ending uh, of the first neuron. We run to the spinal cord to the level of the nucleus proprius of dorsal posterior column. Everyone remembers that the second neuron passes through the typical lemniscal decrusation, ending at the level of the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus. And finally, the third neuron, neuron ends at the level of sensory cortex, uh, uh, area 312. And we remember the terminus technicus homunculus. We describe at that time uh, the motor. There is also sensory homunculus with a different projection. Uh, one more important thing is that uh, there are two tracts. This is the lateral tract and anterior spinal Spinothalamic lateral tract is or has this typical somatotopic arrangement, sacral, lumbar, thoracic, cervical, while the anterior tract doesn't have that uh, this uh, somatotopic arrangement. So don't forget, please, that uh, the, uh, the, the tract must be synapsed at the level of the nucleus proprius of dorsal posterior column. Together with this uh, tract spino thalamic as the main uh, protopathic run, another two, which is spinoreticular, spinotectal. Uh, we stay uh, with the spinoreticular. Spinoreticular is called polysynaptic. Yes, because this spinoreticular, as the name says, passes from the ascents from the, uh, from the uh, receptors in the spinal cord, uh, passing on the same side or Contralaterals use is crossed and also uncrossed, both, both uh, possibilities. So they, uh, the interconnections are found at the level of the reticular formation nuclei, as you see, and uh, they could run on the same side with many collaterals or crossing the median plane uh, to the contralateral reticular formation or uh, is synapsed completely uh, at the level of the brainstem to the same or uh, opposite side. It has more interconnection. That's why we call it polysynaptic, and it's typical protopathic pathway uh, representing uh, the or, or transmitting, conveying uh, the, uh, the pain, uh, extreme touch, pressure, heat, etc. Uh, similar to that is spinotectal. Spinotectal is the tract which uh, originates uh, also in the receptors passing through the sp uh, spinal cord and is crossed, uh, that means it's better to draw it here, uh, ends at the level of the midbrain, tectum important for the transmission of important information, important for the, uh, for the visual reflexes connected with the pain. We know that we react uh, uh, closing eyes and so on uh, the, uh, uh, after some uh, extreme pain, uh, pain information. Uh, the important sensory tract, important or not only for, for us, uh, especially also for, for dentistry students, uh, is the crossed pathway of the anterior head or from the face, uh, is uh, the tract which, uh, uh, which uh, collects the information from the face, uh, from the area which lies anterior to the interauricular line. Handwriting is not the best. Interauricular. We know that interauricular line uh, is the line connecting two auricles, and the area behind that, for instance, the skin behind the line, is innervated by the cervical plexus, segment C1 to C4, and uh, the area in front of that line is innervated by the pathway of anterior head. So, uh, cleaning, uh, and then start with the diagram. So again, what we need, uh, maybe a little bit higher. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, modalities, nociceptive, pain, temperature, touch, uh, deep touch, etc. Via the nerves, we see mainly cranial nerve number five, yes, trigeminus, but also small area number seven, number nine, number 10. Uh, it's divided into trigeminothalamic, 
and trigeminal reticular. Uh, they are different in the course, in the, uh, in the position, in the number of neurons, but also uh, it transmits the pain, uh, well-defined pain, but the trigeminal reticular, as always, the tracks passing through reticular formation are different in the feeling, in perception. This is, uh, there is a, 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 the diffuse pain is transmitted via the trigeminal reticular. What we need again, we need the uh, sensory cortex 312. When we speak about the face, that means we are situated close to the lateral lateral sulcus, you remember, uh, the homunculus, that's why we have written the room homunculus, uh, there is a median plane, and homunculus is, uh, or, or, or in fact is the representation of projection areas to the cortex, fine. Uh, then mm, uh, the information from the face, uh, receptors as we see, first neuron uh, passing to the nucleus of trigeminus, then uh, the second neuron runs either directly, directly to thalamus, to ventral posteromedial nucleus. The next neuron, number three, runs to the cortical area. Uh, the second one, so this one is the uh, trigeminothalamic, and the second is trigeminal reticular, neuron number one is the same, number two ends at the level of the reticular formation, nuclei on one side, then crossing the median plane, uh, interconnecting thalamus with the, uh, in the same nucleus, and then finally, the last neuron is the trigeminal reticular, uh, neuron, neuron number four, which ends at the level of the cortical centers. So this is the anterior head sensitivity, which is transmitted with that, uh, with that pathway. Uh, the following tract, the next one, are the spinocerebellar. We remember that there are two tracts, anterior or ventral, posterior or dorsal. Anterior ventral is crossed, uh, posterior ventral is not crossed, uh, connected with the proprioception. Uh, usually we see also the other uh, subdivision, uh, proprioception, extra extraception on the on the opposite side because it's crossed and on the same side, ipsilateral, because it's not crossed. Uh, we are looking now at the whole diagram. So we have to see, yes, the whole diagram, excellent. So starting with the receptors, which are specialized muscle spindles controlling the tension, as we see some dots, the tension, and the first neuron runs because here we are on the anterior side, must be crossed. We are starting on one, passing into the uh, nucleus. We remember this is the, uh, the stilling Clark as nucleus, lamini five to seven, and the area T1 to L3. And then uh, after synapsic, it goes to the opposite side. We see this is the anterior uh, spinocerebral uh, tract, sorry, tract. And then the next neuron ascends, ascends through a superior cerebral parenchymus, ending at the level of the uh, cerebral cortex. Then the uh, replay, the reaction will be via the, uh, the cells uh, of Parkinje uh, reaching uh, one of the nuclei and then descending tract will run uh, reaching or run this uh, caudally reaching different areas. So this is just uh, just to know that there is also feedback. So this was the anterior track, anterior pathway, which is completely crossed, uh, passing on the same side, as you see, ending at the level of the nucleus still in Clark, lamini uh, five to seven. Then after interconnection, it runs via the anterior spinocerebral tract on the opposite side, reaching finally uh, the cortex. This is, uh, I mean, this is quite clear. Uh, the considered the posterior uh, spinocerebral tract, uh, it uh, originates on the, on the same, at the same level, the muscle spindles, uh, ascending neuron number one, passing into the same neuron on the same side, and then ascending via the posterior spinocerebral tract, reaching not the superior body, uh, inferior peduncle 
and reaching final the cortex. Uh, we know that there are also uh, some fibers that cross the median plane at the level of the interconnections between the cerebelli within the central portion through the vermis. And then uh, we also uh, see that there is a difference uh, that the anterior uh, parallels the proprioception from the lower limbs and trunk and uh, the posterior spinocerebellar relays proprioception uh, from the lower limbs. So we see the trunk and limbs. No, the question is quite clear. What about the upper limbs? We have upper limbs that must be controlled also by some ascending pathway. So looking now at the following uh, pathway, neural pathway, uh, we call it cuneo cerebellar tract cerebral tract, uh, which is added because uh, is in fact the same, but here we see the proprioception from the upper limbs, uh, the neurons pass to the cuneate nucleus, we note nucleus cuneatus, from which uh, the following neuron uh, is terminated in the cortex of cerebellum. So functionally is the same, corresponds to posterior spinocerebral tract, but with the difference, uh, difference is the uh, location of the uh, receptors uh, in the upper extremities, upper limbs. So this is the end of the ascending track, uh, pathways. Uh, any, uh, any damage to the spinal cord, uh, to the uh, neurons ascending via the lemniscus, the lemniscal system based on the bleeding or so on, so on. So it usually results in the, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, missing uh, functionally uh, acting uh, ascending pathways. So any damage leads to the uh, uh, damage uh, to one, uh, one part, one half of the, of the body. Uh, I mean the concerning the uh, sensory innervation. And concerning the descending tracts, uh, this is category B. Descending tracts are divided into the cortical and brainstem motor tracts. We call them also extrapyramidal. So at the beginning, we said that there are cortical and the, and the extra, extra, uh, extra pyramidal, sometimes cortical or pyramidal. So we start with the number one, which is the corticospinal. Very simply, we remember that the name corticospinal is pyramidal, is 100% crossed and uh, what we need is the is to start with the uh, with the cortex we see the cortex the homunculus uh, you remember we started with the leg foot thigh trunk upper limb hand head you see homunculus the motor homunculus has the uh, the innervation of the motor groups of the leg and foot on the median surface of hemisphere while the head is on the lateral uh, surface of the hemisphere. Uh, the first neuron starting from the area number four uh, passes through the internal capsule. We remember there is the posterior limb of internal capsule and we also remember somatotopic or, or organization arrangement of this first neuron which passes without, uh, without interruption through all the uh, the basal portions of the brainstem passing uh, to the contralateral side in 80% uh, the fibers are crossed and via the lateral, again, segmental arrangement, we remember, uh, lateral larger uh, corticospinal tract ends at the level of the anterior motor nuclei and the second neuron ends at the level of the lower motor uh, this lower motor ending and the motor end plate. So again, uh, this information corresponds with the, uh, with, the uh, with the main scheme explaining the uh, the main types of the uh, of the cortico uh, cortic uh, or descending tracts. That means the first one, corticospinal, is the pyramidal direct is crossed in eighty percent at the level of the decussation of pyramids, as we said. But uh, the, uh, the rest, around 20%, uh, this sends mm, uh, to the segments and the fibers are crossed at the level of segments, so segmental crossing, descending to the white, look, white anterior commissure and the anterior white commissure, 
is here, contains the fibers that end at the level of the, again, anterior motor horn to the motor at the level of motor uh, or alpha motor neuron. So the second neuron is the same lower motor neuron ending at the motor end plate. So this is absolutely the same. So finally, all 100% of the fibers is crossed. Our right half of the body is controlled by the left hemisphere and vice versa. So lesions uh, of the spinal cord follow occlusion of the uh, spinal arteries, trauma, chronic impression of spinal cord, and is caused by tumors, infection, and perhaps intervertebral discs. So these are all the things which were discussed. And uh, then the, uh, the lesions logically uh, disrupt or interrupt descending motor pathways and also ascending pathways and damage to different uh, tracks of cord is accompanied by, uh, by typical uh, distinctive clinical symptoms and syndromes. So we, uh, we understand the descending tracks and now we start with the following. So this was the corticospine. The next one is corticonuclear number two. Uh, as, the name, as the name says, the corticonuclear uh, originates in the cortical area. We are looking at the area four, six, eight. We are at the level of the homunculus on the lateral surface of the hemisphere. Uh, the name corticonuclear is sometimes used promiscue with the corticobulbar. Corticobulbar because it means after old terminology, bulbus is the largest part of the brainstem. Brainstem were usually end or usually lie are located the uh, motor nuclei. So very, very easy is to remember both of them, corticonuclear is better. Uh, so again, we are following the first neuron which uh, passes through the genu. We remember cortic nuclear uh, pathway lies at the level of the genu. First neuron ends at the level of the uh, motor, motor uh, nucleus of the, uh, of the nerve, that means, uh, for instance, number three, number four, number five, number seven, etc., etc. Uh, so, and then the second neuron ends at the level of the muscles of the head. This is easy, same as the uh, typical pyramidal pathway. But uh, the question which appears immediately, uh, the, uh, because this is similar to function of cor and course of the first uh, type, this corticospinal pyramid, uh, how we can explain the situation when we, uh, when we look at some, some points and then we see that our bulbs, our eyes move in the same moment, uh, in the same direction. So they are, uh, they are absolutely identical movements. And uh, the explanation is quite clear because the neurons uh, run also together with the neuron number five to the reticular formation nucleus, nuclei, which form the chain in the tegmentum. We remember, we all remember, it's a tegmentum and the tegmentum of the brainstem. And the next new or via the next interneuron, uh, they uh, provide a connection with the contralateral motor nucleus or nuclei of the cranial nerves, of cranial nerves, see cranial nerves, right? So we now can follow that the consensual movements of the eyes, for instance, when we speak about three, four, six, so then they are based on the interconnections through the reticular formation nuclei to the a contralateral side, and then this is the same muscles of the head, muscles of the, I mean, the oclo, oclo bulbar muscles, extra bulbar muscles, etc., etc. So the, uh, the in principle, the consensual movements uh, are uh, based on the uh, interconnection through the reticular formation nuclei. To the contralateral side. Uh, there are some specific features. If we just briefly look at the nerve number seven, uh, fibers are crossed and also uncrossed from the areas 4, 6, 24. So please uh, 
take in consideration that not only four, six, eight are the areas with the typical motor neurons with the pyramidal neurons. Uh, the motor neurons are found also in the other areas, and not only these, but preferably in the areas four, six, eight uh, for the uh, for the eye movements. Uh, cranial number five are crossed and also uncrossed. Also, nucleus ambiguous, the motor nucleus, uh, which consists of the motor nuclear nerve number 9, 10, 11, is also crossed and uncrossed, and usually passing from area number four. Uh, number 12 is completely crossed. So just the, some information, I mean that at the moment, it's not necessary to study all the details of all the nerves. Uh, our uh, aim is to give you the short review of the principal of main pathways, the tracts, to know the review of the tracks and understand them. Uh, the next one is the corticotectal pathway. You know, corticotectal, as you see, in many cases, we can, from the name, simply identify the course and position uh, of the pathway. The number three, uh, which originates from the 6-8, but also, as you see, from 17, 19, 19, we remember that we said that after Broadman, the area 17 is the primary uh, primary visual cortex. 18, 19 are the secondary areas. Uh, we can ask, how is it possible that the cortical, uh, cortical area 17, 18, 19 contain also the motor neurons? Yes, we said uh, some seconds uh, go that uh, they have these, uh, they contain these motor neurons, which is important for the ocular pupillary reflexes. So we see that the pathway is not crossed, uh, descending uh, to the superior colliculi and from superior colliculi, uh, they uh, end in the uh, in the pu pupilla, pupilla, that means the pupilla reflexes, means the, uh, means the uh, smooth musculature inside the bulb, bulbus oculi. Uh, we see uh, cortico interstitial, there are more possibilities. There is the uh, special nucleus, the interstitial uh, nucleus is a nucleus of cajal situated in the pretectal area. Pretectal area is the area uh, belonging to the end of mesencephalon, and this nucleo, uh, this tract is not not crossed, uh, starting from the uh, motor uh, motor areas, ending at the level of the pretectal area. Just to know that if you read it somewhere, there is a cortic interstitial. So this is the path which is involved in the oculopupillar reflexes. We will speak about the oculopupillar reflexes in the following minutes. Then uh, there is another one, number four, corticobulbus. Again, very easy to remember, corticorubral. The name says that it runs uh, from the cortex to the nucleus ruber. We see area number four, six is uh, not crossed, also crossed, uh, ending at the level of red nucleus. So as written here, influences activity of the circle, uh, cerebellum red nucleus olive. So that means they, they, these, uh, these movements, better the pathway controls the movements. We said that red nucleus is a typical subcortical center, uh, which is involved in the uh, control of the motor activity. So very simply, uh, this is involved in the, also in the following tracts, interconnecting tracts like the, uh, like the rubrospinal, rubroreticula, etc. So again, uh, briefly, uh, uh, red nucleus is involved in the control of uh, motor tension, uh, uh, cooperation between the muscles, etc. Cortico uh, reticular, important tracts uh, originating from areas 4, 6, 3, 1, 2, uh, again from the sensory cortex is crossed and also is not, is not crossed, both are possible, this one and that one. Uh, we see that uh, it can descend on the same side, uh, ending at the level of the uh, reticular formation, from reticular formation, uh, the continuation of the reticular formation interconnection will be usually a reticular spinal tract, uh, very important motor system, or it's crossed to the opposite side, ending at the level of the reticular spinal tract, and finally passing to the cranial nerves, uh, then this tract will be called reticulonuclear, so corticoreticular, reticulonuclear, uh, two neurons uh, of the same track, or more neurons, biscreos, or polysynaptic. Uh, so these all up to here were the tracks, just five tracks of typical direct 
pathways which originate from the cortex and, and at the level of the subcortical centers. Then the second category are the, you used several times, sorry, sorry, uh, the, in the extra pyramidal tracts or tracts of the brainstem or motor tracts of the brainstem or brainstem motor tracts pathways. Uh, there are only few, and we, if, you will, if you will read it in the books, just, uh, just to be able to classify them and not to study all the tests. Interstitial spinal uh, is uh, the drug which originates from the interstitial nucleus of Cajal. We used the name in the previous description. Uh, the Cajal nucleus lies in the, uh, the pre a tactile area uh, at the level of the, um, uh, the, the midbrain and uh, they transmit uh, the we register some signals and transmits them uh, to the movements of the eyes we react on some sounds coming from one side and we remember I'm sure that we remember, we, all of us remember that it must pass via the medial longitudinal fasciculus MLF and we use that yellow color in the oval fields at the different levels of the spinal cord and also brainstem. So it goes to the spinal cord motor nuclei. So we usually, uh, we see some lightning, so then we usually turn, turn head or we, we react on this, on this uh, lightning, uh, moving the head or eyes via this interstitial, interstitial spinal tract, via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Uh, easy to remember that the next tract will be tectospinal. Tectospinal usually completely crossed, starting from the tectum of mesencephalon, Tectum means from superior colliculi uh, crossing. We remember the drawing uh, uh, of the tectospinal tract, uh, which ends at the motor nuclei of the spinal cord in the upper segments. That means C1 to C4. And uh, this is a reaction on the optic signals, uh, then resulting in the movements of the head. So this is the same as the previous. Uh, previous uh, pathway. Next one is reticulospinal, very important, old, phylogenetically old and very important pathway, uh, crossed, uncrossed, uh, uh, which originates from the uh, reticular formation nuclei, which receives many information from the from, uh, cortex via the corticoreticular tract. So then the continuation is the reticulospinal, it passes on one side or, or crossed, and the, uh, the first neuron uh, ends at the level of the motor nuclei of the spinal cord in all the segments, yes, uh, ending uh, on the motor end plates in all segments, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. Uh, then uh, the next one is rubrospinal. Yes, we said it's a cortical rubral, and rubrospinal is the continuation, is the track which is also completely cross starting from glucose ruber, passing uh, to the opposite side, and ending uh, at the motor nuclei of the spinal cord uh, in areas uh, after uh, or lamini, rexet lamini number five to number eight. No? Uh, and running to the end, uh, the next one is number five, vestibular spinal uh, tract, <clears throat> which is the last one. Again, as you, uh, as you read it, it uh, passes from the vestibular nuclei uh, towards the spinal cord. Uh, the pathway is usually usually not crossed, uh, 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 passing or running to the uh, spinal motor nuclei in all segments, cervical, lumbar, thoracic, uh, sacral, and uh, then, uh, then it activates muscles of the back, important for the uh, for the muscles, uh, providing the upright vertical position and also uh, to the muscles of the limbs. So these are uh, just five pathways representing the older uh, extra pyramid systems or even uh, better, the, uh, the tracts of the brainstem. No? And uh, then the last part are the special sense organs and special sense tracts. Uh, for the human beings is uh, definitely the most important, uh, the special sense organ, number one, 
is the visual visual organ. So that's why we speak about visual pathways, visual pathway uh, in the first position as the first time. Uh, the uh, visual pathway contains or consists, better, consists of the neurons number N1 to N4. Uh, they originate from the proper receptors of the retina from the different parts, ending, ending, so uh, to cortical projection, so ending at the level of the uh, cortical uh, projection area number 17 after Brodmann, but also from the 17 also to 18 and 19, which are the uh, which are the secondary uh, projection uh, areas uh, of this visual pathway. Uh, we are looking briefly at very simplified drawing. This drawing is really just introduction. Uh, we know from the atlases better diagrams that is that is sufficient for our explanation. Uh, we we know from the high school that the size of the bulbous oculi, the eyeball, is approximately 24 millimeters in all the direction, and it has three layers. This is the uh, this is the uh, the external tunic, external layer, which is anteriorly, uh, which is anterior, the part which is called cornea, and posterior, the largest part forming the skeleton of the bulb is the sclera, the white one. The middle tunic, middle layer, consists of the iris. Yes, we see the iris. We used blue for iris. That means the here on the drawing is the lamina. Uh, controlling the size of the pupil. Pupil is the opening here, uh, controlling the, uh, the the amount of light falling on the retina. Uh, then ciliary body. Important is the ciliary body, smooth musculature arranged in some layers, and important for the movements of the uh, of the lens. Important for the accommodation. And then for the following one is the choroid. Choroid is the vascular layer. Yes, the reddish one. I just put some uh, reddish lines showing the uh, the choroid choroidea. No, and finally the last one is retina. Retina is a yellowish. Uh, retina uh, has the uh, has the portion which ends here in ora serrata, and then uh, the area from here dorsally, the yellowish one, is up optic active. Uh, which contains photoreceptors. Uh, that means rods and cones. Uh, from here. This contains just the pigmentum, pigmentum covering the iris and the ciliary body, and this is the uh, the area without any photoreceptors. But the area is important because it contains the uh, the uh, the pigmental cells, uh, avoiding eliminating the uh, the reflexes, light reflexes. No, uh, when we look at the chain of the neurons forming the tract, uh, the neuron, neuron number one. Uh, is represented by the photoreceptors. Everyone knows that photoreceptors are rods and cones. We see the rods and cones here, the rods uh, registering the scale of the light and grayish to the grayish and black, black tone, and then uh, uh, cones for color vision. Uh, they are interpolated and interconnected with the next neuron via the bipolar cells, and the bipolar cells with the uh, and three third neuron multipolar um, uh, are green in green multipolar cells and in uh, approximately 80 uh, percent at the level of the lateral geniculate body which is the subcortical center of the optic pathway from which the last neuron and four ends in area 17 primary motor cord, uh, primary visual cortex uh, projection area number 17 after broad one 20%, approximately 20%, uh, we call them non-genicular connections. They run uh, to the superior colicular mesencephalon, to thalamus, to hypothalamus, to habinula, et cetera, et cetera, to reticular formation uh, in the retectal area, important for the, uh, the other following reflexes. So this is just the introduction. Uh, on the next page, we see uh, the connection via the uh, lateral geniculate body. We said the third neuron ends at the level of reticular geniculate body. And then from here, 
passes long neuron to area 17, uh, 17, which will be seen in the in the whole in the in the full diagram. Uh, we said that 20 uh, 20 percent approximately uh, passes to all these areas. We said important will be the mesencephalic pretectal area, and together with the uh, with the neurons, run also. Uh, the other neurons which form are involved in the oculopupillar reflexes, sympathetic, parasympathetic part, which will be explained. A neural visual tract uh, contains, as a com complex, contains the, uh, the main pathway and also the other reflexes. Uh, just for, uh, for better uh, understanding and description, we use two colors, one is blue, one is red, not because this is the usual used color for the sensory and motor pathways, no. These are just the colors for this diagram used for the drawing of the visual, visual field. So please, this is uh, generally accepted on the, in the literature. Now we are looking at the main scheme of the neural pathway, the visual pathway, uh, which consists of four neurons. First of all, we have to uh, register two different colors uh, for the visual field. So we see in, uh, we see in the uh, yellowish field uh, the, uh, the different fields. Uh, one is nasal, on one side is uh, bluish and one on the other one is uh, red. And note, please, that these colors uh, are, are uh, cor or correspond with the generally accepted uh, colors uh, in all, all the other books. Uh, these uh, nasal and temporal fields are in different position to the fields uh, found in the retina. So we distinguish between the visual fields, number one, and between the fields of retina. So we see again nasal and temporal fields on each side. Uh, if we move a bit, uh, we re also remember and we see that the pathway consists of the neurons which are crossed and also uncrossed. So now we are looking at the at this following and the following part of the neural pathway. Uh, concerning uh, the bulb, bulb contains the lens. Uh, uh, then uh, we speak about the uh, temporal and nasal uh, fields of retina. Then we describe the optic nerve, optic chiasm, and finally optic tract. Uh, the optic tract ends at the level of the subcortical center called uh, lateral geniculate body. You see it here, lateral geniculate body on both sides. And then the fourth neuron finally forms the optic radiation. So repeating the whole, uh, whole set of the neurons. First neurons uh, represented by rods and cones, as we have seen in the previous text, uh, are situated within the retina. Then the third neuron uh, reaches finally the lateral geniculate body. And number four, the fourth neuron uh, predomin predominantly uh, is terminated in the area 17, as you see it here, which is called uh, the uh, the area or the uh, cortex projection uh, area uh, after broadband number 17. Uh, of course, there are also the fibers which are uh, interconnected with both uh, surrounding areas, number 18 and number 19, which are called association areas, which receive also the direct connections uh, from area number 17. As we said, the third neuron uh, is crossed and uncrossed. When we follow one, one line, that means the blue one, from the temporal uh, visual field, uh, they reach the nasal part of the retina, the neurons pass through the optic chiasm and finally end at the level of the lateral geniculate body. Then the fourth neuron is the same. Uh, when we look at the uh, nasal temporal, uh, sorry, nasal visual field, so we see the temporal, uh, the, uh, which ends at the level of the temporal uh, field of retina, and then the reddish line passes without any crossing the median plane and end also uh, in the lateral genuclei body, which is, as you remember, the metathalamic nucleus situated on the lateral posterior surface of the thalamus. So around 80% of all the fibers run in this way. So that means that around 80% uh, of the pathway 
ends in area 17. But uh, there is a, a smaller number of uh, the fibers which end in the different areas. Small number of fibers leave the optic nerve before, as we sit here, before uh, reaching the lateral genuicoid body to terminate in the in the pretectal area. So we are looking now at the area which contains specialized cells in the rostral portion of the mesencephalon. In the following minutes, we will see uh, the scheme uh, showing the structures uh, in this pretectal area. Uh, the third neuron ends at the level of pretectal area on the nucleus or in the area which, as you see, also contains many interconnections of the reticular formation. And then the following neuron passes to the edinger westphal nucleus. We remember that edinger westphal nucleus is also called accessory motor nucleus of number three, from which, after synapsing, the next neuron number five passes to the ciliary ganglion. We also remember from description of the, uh, of the neural uh, uh, fibers of the trigeminus that there are, there are the parasympathetic ganglia, one of them the ciliary ganglia situated on the lateral side, which corresponds with our diagram on the lateral side of optic nerve. Then after interpolation, after synapsing, the last neuron passes to the uh, target area, that means the, uh, the to the uh, sphincter muscle of pupil and ciliary body. Sphincter of pupil controls the size of the pupil and ciliary body uh, controls uh, the, uh, the position of the lens in the process of accommodation. Uh, we see that dark red or brownish lines, so they correspond, all of them, or they belong to the parasympathetic portion of first important reflex, which is connected with the neural pathway, with the, with the visual pathway, which is called uh, oculopupillary reflex. We see it here, oculopupillary reflex consists of the parasympathetic part, so uh, this was the first line what we have seen. Then look uh, at the following, following track. We are following uh, another neuron, uh, number three, which ends also in the pretectal area, but because it's sympathetic, runs via the fourth neuron to the, uh, uh, to the spinal cord, uh, to the intermedial lateral nucleus in segment C8, T1, we call it centrum ciliospinale, and finally the next neuron number five after synapsing reaches the superior cervical ganglion of the sympathetic trunk and as the para uh, or better as the as the post post ganglionic fibers run through the ciliary ganglion without interruption to the dilator of pupil. Dilator muscle of pupil is the uh, muscle that acts in the opposite, opposite uh, sense, in the opposite direction. Uh, so the parasympathetic system controls the sphincter muscle of pupil as we discussed right now, and then uh, dilator is under control of the sympathetic. So these two systems belong to the oculopupillary reflexes, which uh, start from the pretectal area, passing uh, via different neurons, and finally reaching the ciliary ganglion. Also, one more important thing is that the ciliary ganglion contains the parasympathetic fibers, which are synapsed here, as we discussed, and sympathetic system, which passes without interruption. That's why we call this ganglia parasympathetic ganglia, which are situated or are situated close uh, to the branches of the trigeminus, uh, or uh, this one lies on the lateral side of the optic nerve. So, uh, as previously noted, each optic nerve carries information from or concerning both halves of the visual fields. So, that means uh, in our diagram, bluish and reddish. Uh, the visual field can be considered as being comprised of four quadrants. So at the moment, it's not necessary to describe details, but uh, the visual field is registered as, the, as uh, having four quadrants. Uh, that means left, right, upper, lower, each projecting to its own corresponding quadrant 
of the primary area. So primary area, number 17, receives different information from different, uh, different uh, parts of the quadrants. Uh, concerning the, uh, the, uh, the photoreceptors, we said that there are rods and cones, just for short revision. Uh, when we compare the rods and cones, uh, uh, of which the rods, rods are about 20 times more numerous than, uh, than, uh, uh, than cones. And uh, the numbers in millions means that rods are around 120 and cones around six. So this is principal difference. And would you imagine that around, uh, around 1 million fibers of coronal nerve number two, the optic nerve, controls or transmits the information uh, from, uh, from the retina. So the retinal fields uh, contain or register much more information than finally run via the, uh, the fibers of the optic nerve. The explanation is quite logical because the, uh, the cells are joined together forming the bipolar, multipolar uh, cells, etc. No, and concerning uh, the, um, uh, the light reflexes, there are more reflexes. We mentioned the pretectal area, as we said, and pretectal area contains some specialized cells. So on the next diagram, we are looking now uh, on the uh, following drawing, uh, representing nuclei of the rostral part of the midbrain. We call it pretectal area, which is here. Uh, on this simplified drawing, just half, uh, we see the mesencephalon uh, for uh, introduction, important position of uh, cerebral aqueduct. Uh, close to that is situated uh, the nucleus motorius uh, and its accessory part, which is called Edinger westphal nucleus. Uh, we know that Edinger westphal nucleus is involved in the oculopupillary reflex. Uh, this was mentioned. But there are more cells which are important. And also, if you read it in any books, uh, just short review uh, about uh, some of them. Uh, first of all, we see the pretectal nucleus situated on the more lateral side. Again, we are in the rostral portion of the midbrain, uh, neighboring uh, the beginning uh, or the inferior portion of the diencephalon. So the pretectal nucleus is involved in the light pupillary reflexes, which said several times. Below that, lies the interstitial nucleus of Cajal. We remember that Cajal is a Spanish, uh, the famous Spanish neurologist, neurophysiologist. Uh, this nucleus interstitialis in Latin activates the adding westphal nucleus in the process of accommodation and convergence reaction. Then uh, we have also one more cranial nucleus, which is called nucleus of Darkshevich, which is here a nucleus or dark uh, which is involved in the saccadic movements. If you read into the, into the books, saccadic eye movements means that, as written below this line, are involuntary automatic movements of the eyes when, uh, for instance, reading a printed page, or printed materials. So they are movements which are connected with the focusing, focusing on, on nearby subjects, so with printed page. Then there is also one nucleus, nucleus of Perlia, as you see, it lies at the center on the midline. This is uh, of the others are, uh, are by, uh, bar situated on both sides. Uh, this one is unpaired. Uh, so the nucleus of Perlia, or also called media nucleus, uh, this activates the motor nucleus of trigemi uh, of uh, <laughs> oculomotorius nerve through the small area of white matter medial longitudinal fasciculus. We remember that medial longitudinal fasciculus is also involved in the other pathway. You remember the vestibular tract. So this will be explained. So then just just to know that we have seen the, on the cross section this uh, medial longitudinal fasciculus in some sections of the spinal cord and also brainstem. No, and here you see the black substance which is not involved in any, any part of the pretectal area, just for uh, orientation in the field. So this is the uh, cross section uh, of the midbrain where we see different cells uh, involved in the light reflexes or activities uh, connected 
uh, or cooperating, in fact, with the visual pathway, visual track. So next one uh, is uh, just information concerning the second main pathway, uh, which is again crossed, uh, which is crossed, and which is also uncrossed, as we see. Uh, what we need, uh, we need, first of all, uh, we need uh, the receptor, if we move it a little bit up, a little bit more. So we need the, um, uh, the cortical center, area 41, 42, Hessel's gyri, oriented uh, on the internal surface of the lateral, groove lateral sulcus. Then we need also the organ, uh, organ uh, in the internal ear, in, uh, in the cochlea, organ of corti or organ of corti. You see that uh, it, uh, it uh, registers high tones here and low tones in terminal part. Uh, we have uh, two and a half uh, turns uh, in our, in our uh, cochlear duct as we see it here. And then if you look at the nucleus, there are the, uh, the receptors, uh, neuron number one. We start from the receptor passing to two different, uh, different nuclei. So if we are at the level of pons, uh, we see the inferior cochlear nucleus and then superior cochlear nucleus. So there are two cochlear nuclei, two cochlear nuclei. Uh, the, yes, that's excellent. So we see again, yeah, this is even better. So here we see again the first uh, neuron. Yes, here's the, uh, this cochlear duct, the triangular. Here is the organ of corte inside, which contains inner and outer hails. The bending, uh, bending via the uh, compression of uh, the moving perilymph and endolymph leads to the action potential and the action potential is transmitted transmitted via the neurons so this is just the, but you were studying physiology definitely in neurophysiology so we left the superior and inferior uh, cochlear nucleus these cochlear nuclei on both sides receive the first neuron so starting with the first pathway we are looking at the first neuron ending at the level of inferior uh, or even sometimes it's written as a posterior inferior cochlear nucleus, which uh, when, then we follow two possibilities. The second neuron passes through the trapezoid body without interruption to the either inferior cochlear nucleus or to the complex of the olivary nuclei in the superior olivary nucleus. After, after synapsing, it ascends via the lateral lemniscus. You remember the medial lemniscus is the sensory uh, in general, but lateral lemniscus is the, is the uh, auditory. And then uh, it ends at the level, here we see the inferior colliculi. The next neuron passes to the medial genicoid body and the last neuron ends in the hashes gyri in area 41, 42. You see that there are more pathways, more tracts. Uh, this was one pathway. Another one is on the same side. Uh, we go through the superior olivary complex, ascending via the, lat uh, via the lateral lemniscus on the contralateral side, and it goes up to either to the same side, inferior colliculi, and then from here will be the left one on our drawing, or it could be, it could be crossed to the opposite side, so there is also crossing, and then uh, the pathway is the same. Uh, that means medial genicoid body, and the next neuron, and the final one uh, ending at the level 41, 42. But also, there are connection with area 22. This is Association Center for a Sensory Speech Area, Wernicke. This is what we already mentioned in description of the Broadman's map uh, on the medial and lateral surface of the brain cortex. 
So this was the uh, the uh, this was the pathway involved involving the inferior inferior cochlear nucleus. Uh, the same neuron and could end or ends at the level of the superior uh, cochlear uh, nucleus, which passes uh, under the surface of the fourth ventricle, base of the fourth ventricle, that means the rhomboid fossa. We call this pathway as the dorsal acoustic tree. Uh, we can even see them just beneath the surface of the, or how they cross the, uh, the surface of the uh, base uh, or, the, or the rhomboid fossa. Uh, then they go to the opposite side via the third neuron ending. This is the well-known pathway at the level of the medial, uh, sorry, uh, or the inferior colliculus, then medial genital body, and then this is the same. So they are the superior dorsal tree. So we can summarize that. We see two different types of the acoustic tree. Uh, these ones passing through the trapezoid body are called ventral tree, V, and these ones are the dorsal tree, dorsal acoustic tree. So uh, the, the pathway is usually completely crossed, usually completely crossed, as you see uh, on the on the uh, explanation of the uh, ventral acoustic tree on ascending via the lateral lemniscus, reaching the inferior colliculi, finally the medial genital body, and then Heschel's gyri, or on the same side as you see, and then usually it could be either on this side or on the contralateral. So you see there are more possibilities uh, showing uh, the pathway of the, of the hearing, acoustic pathway. Next one is its sister, because that tract, that, that pathway, or brother, because tractus, uh, is called vestibular tract, vestibular pathway. Uh, vestibular tract is crossed and uncrossed. Uh, what we need, uh, again, we need uh, the receptors, specialized receptors, absolutely correct. These are receptors, these are ampullar crests. There are three ampullar crests found in the three semicircular canals and ducts, uh, controlling the, the movements. Uh, we call it dynamic equilibrium. And we need also the two static maculae, uh, for static equilibrium, uh, they control the position of the body. Uh, one one macula lies here, the second one lies here, and the, there is in the right angle. So this maculae control the position. We call it static organ of static equilibrium. Now, so starting from the receptor, first neuron ends. Uh, the complex of the vestibular nuclei. There are four nuclei for, for vestibular nuclei from which run direct fibers. Uh, number one important connection is to the spinal cord. We said this is the main motor center, better, uh, more reflex center, vestibular spinal tract is number one. Then uh, the the following uh, neurons run to the reticular formation on the same side or the, on the opposite side. Uh, so vestibular reticular uh, pathway also uh, quite clear. Next one is the direct connection with the thalamus. Uh, this is the vestibular thalamic nucleus and vestibular rubral nucleus. Uh, sorry, vestibular new rubral Vestibular rubral is here. Yeah, 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 vestibular rubral. But vestibular rubral uh, could be either direct or indirect. We will see indirect via the media longi longitudinal fasciculus. And vestibular cerebellar is, uh, <laughs> drawing is not easy. So improving, improving, yes. This is the vestibular cerebellar tract. And vestibular cerebellar tract is direct connection between vestibular nuclei and cerebellum. We will see on the opposite side that the vestibular cerebellar is connected with the feedback system uh, cerebral vestibular. So the left, uh, left side, uh, the description of the direct pathway from the uh, from vestibular nuclei to the spinal cord as the vestibular spinal, then vestibular reticular on the same side, on the opposite side, on the contralateral side, uh, then direct 
connection to the uh, red nucleus, to the thalamus and cerebellum. Uh, when we look at this yellowish block, the double arrows, uh, we remember, we said many times that there's a medial longitudinal fasciculus, which is the uh, fasciculus interconnecting the motor nuclei of the neck and then uh, the areas connected with the movements, with the, we register some, uh, some, uh, some signals and then we react by the movements of the head and neck. So via this myelin fasciculus pass also the trucks either to the uh, uh, red nucleus, but mainly to the either to the same side or the contralateral side after interruption within the fasciculus to the nuclei of cranial nerves, you see number three, number uh, number four, number six, so uh, which are involved in the movements of the eyes. So we have more more tracts uh, which pass via the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Uh, the uh, the drawing on the opposite side explains the connection, direct connection with the uh, with the cerebellum. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, the bluish is the uh, is the vestibular cerebral tract ending at the level of cortex. Next neuron, the Parkinger cells ending uh, at the level of the uh, deep nuclei. Uh, here is, is just the dentate nucleus. And then the second neuron, as the feedback is called cerebral vestibular, passing back to the nuclei, or it could be also connected uh, with the parallelly running of uh, descending track as the vestibular spinal. So we see that there are uh, more pathways, more possibilities from vestibular nuclei uh, to the cortex, from cortex as the feedback to the dentate or the other nuclei, better the other nuclei, and descending pathways uh, returning back to the nuclei, vestibular nuclei, or as a direct pathway involved in the spinal cord as the vestibular spinal. So a reticular formation reacts uh, on the changes or the signals coming from receptors also with direct track on the same side or, or the contralateral side, we call it a, a reticular spinal. So there are direct tracks, vestibular spinal and the reticular spinal, both tracks were explained in the previous description. So we know and we see uh, the next pathway, which is the uh, pathway of equilibrium, equilibrium. And the last one is the, the pathway, which is connected with the taste. So next one is the pathway of the solitary tract number four. Solitary tract is the this is the pathway uh, uh, which passes through the specialized nucleus, nucleus solitary tract. Uh, we call it also gustatory, but gustatory part is only one part. So we can. Uh, uh, this was the explanation of the uh, of the uh, maculae. So I mean that this is sufficient. And then, uh, if we will look at the whole diagram of the pathway, what we need is the area 43, this is the cortical projection of the uh, pathway of taste. Then we need thalamus, we need also the amygdala as a part of the limbic system and also hypothalamic nuclei. And here is the pontine taste area, we call it parabrachial nucleus. So we will, we will change a little bit position up very nice. And then here we see the whole diagram. No, uh, from the tongue, uh, we know that the taste buds, the receptors, uh, anterior two thirds via the corda tympani, posterior one third via the nerve number nine, and area around epiglottis nerve number 10. So there are three cranial nerves, corda tympani belonging to nerve number seven, we remember. First neuron ends at the level of this from all the areas. Uh, on the uh, gustatory part of the, the nucleus of solitary tract. No, uh, the nucleus is here, uh, found in oblongata, nucleus of solitary tract. The only, that portion, the only cranial portion 
is called gustatory, gustatory nucleus. The other parts belong to the or are involved in other activities, uh, including the respiration, controlling of pH of blood, etc. Then uh, the neurons, the following second neuron runs either to the same site, reticular formation nuclei, or to the contralateral site of reticular formation. We said that reticular formation uh, contains many centers which cooperate with uh, all the special sense organs, uh, or uh, the uh, direct pathway ends at the level of hypothalamus. Uh, hypothalamic anterior hypothalamic nuclei are also involved in the in the reflexes protecting the body. Uh, here is written vomiting. Yes, vomiting means this is the reaction on some uh, very negative uh, what we could eat, avoiding avoiding the danger. Uh, then uh, the next nucleus uh, runs also to the parabrachial nucleus. Uh, in some in some uh, books you can see that this is a separate uh, where the uh, the the nuclei and in some in some neuro uh, neurophysiologists you can see that uh, the um, the pathway passes from the parabrachial nucleus in the pons uh, via the medial lemniscus ending at the level of the ventral posterior medial nuclei of thalamus and the last tract ends at the level of 43 last neuron uh, the fact is that um, this tract is called uh, the solitaro thalamicus, uh, sol solitaro solitario thalamic tract. Uh, but uh, there is also direct connection with amygdala uh, belonging to the limbic system. We know that the, the, the pathway of the taste and pathway of the smell must cooperate. But uh, there are probably also some direct connections with the cortex. And the cortic cortical direct connection is probably based on some uh, uh, some identification identification of the uh, of the uh, taste uh, registered uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the pontine level. So we could say that there are more pathways, more possibilities uh, from or the neurons passing from the uh, gustatory nucleus. So summarizing the facts, uh, the last pathway, the special sense organs, we know that we, or we already explained also the uh, olfactory tract, olfactory uh, pathway uh, together with the explanation of the limbic system. So then this one, number four, uh, originates from the specialized uh, uh, complexes of the cells, the taste buds uh, of the surface of the tank, ending uh, the first neurons ending uh, in the new gustato nucleus, and from gustato nucleus run the neurons to reticular formation nuclei on same or contralateral side to the hypothalamus, hypothalamus uh, to amygdala to pontine level parabranchial nucleus, or uh, also directly to the thalamic nuclei, or indirectly from which the last neuron ends uh, in the uh, postcentral gyrus on the inferior surface, inferior part of the postcentral gyrus area 43, the gustatory projection area. So this is all to the uh, projection pathways. We try it in the short review to uh, go through all the pathways, uh, the ascending as well as descending, the projecting ones. So as a summary, we would say that uh, the pathways in this short uh, short review are not explained uh, in the uh, in the def very difficult mode, very difficult uh, system, or uh, explaining uh, them as the complex of many possibilities. Uh, as our best uh, best recommendation for the study is to look at the pathways, revise the main things from the systematic uh, anatomy of the uh, of the brain, brainstem, uh, spinal cord, uh, telencephalon, diencephalon, interconnect them, and you will see that it has uh, it has uh, uh, logical a logical uh, internal system, which is not complicated to studies. Thank you for your attention. Wishing you all the success in your further studies, especially in the neuroanatomy. We paid uh, more time, uh, especially to this uh, topic, which is very interesting, and I'm sure will, this will be this will bring you many benefits. Uh, thank you for your attention, and all the best in your in your uh, exam in your further.
studies.